Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. Then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods, midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with drop ships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Renardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid, Renato told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Renato had to run after him. The two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Renato said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. dropship flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. The Gate of Heroes. Someone's idea of a joke. Making the Skyship Docks a gated community. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm gonna steal your ship. 
I'm not taking the damn book anywhere, and neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Had to hand it to the kid. He was an idiot, but he had guts. Where was Renardo going to get a hero sword? Ore and wind essence? That sounds about right. I'll need a workshop, though. Perfect. Hero Sword, Q-E-D. This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook and she'd laughed at Renato's jokes even when he didn't know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her. And she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was. Just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I harped, said the kid. Wise-ass kid. Hey, look out behind you. Cute, said Renato. Ah, oh, ravens. It was time to talk some sense into the kid. Just hook his way across the ledge and chase the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. How would he have done it? Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kester run in 12 furlongs, oh, so the salesman had told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book! Shouted the kid and took off. No! Peter! But the kid ran for it and a goggler nailed him with its eye beam. Was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes. 
in a kid-sized pile of ashes. Damn it. Why hadn't he lied and told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels? The kid would be alive now. Really pissed off and betrayed, but alive. Oh, damn it. Renardo picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. deal about this book anyway. Maybe he should open it and find out. All that had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur, and now three Raven scout ships were chasing him. Where are you running, rebel? Cored the Raven captain over the loud hailer. Renato could see them cranking up their catapults. Just going out for milk? Renato yelled back. Where can you run? Laughed the raven horribly. Far behind him, another city was burning. The dark cloud above its island was thousands of Imperial ships. The fleet was doing a thorough job. Take us to the rebel base and we'll spare your life. It called. The entire jury-rigged rebel fleet was only a few islands to the east. Beyond that were only the pillars of heaven sea of endless blood-colored tornadoes. The rebellion was out of time. Unless Renardo could bring a game-changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper, the legendary weapon that had exiled the Lost Gods. Surely a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lupino had sent Renato a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renato could only rescue him. Renato dived the farfarer towards the abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lupino or the Sky Ripper. Pino. Apparently, the mad rabbit had sold a Pegasus that he did not exactly own. Lupino always wiggled out of trouble, given time. But he was out of time. The Ravens had figured out that Lupino was a rebel spy. If the fleet reached him first, they'd string him up for that. Never mind the winged horse. Lapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had... had everybody fled the ravens? Renato's blood was up. He just needed to smash something.
Ooh, sparkly, thought Renardo. People were frightened these days. Just two weeks past, Renardo had sneaked through an empty town and listened to the raven's call about the emperor's new taste in ritual sacrifice. Firewalls only let you through if they think you're hot enough. Can't we just agree to disagree? Said Renato. No? Ravens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even top spies like Lupino. Where had the mad rabbit got to? Renato felt like he was ready to learn new things. <laughs> Thank goodness he didn't have to go to school for that. It was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember.
thing about ravens was, they never dropped any loot, and no one ever wanted the feathers. Dirty and bloody, Bernardo finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. Bernardo recognized the cards. It was Lapino's favorite deck. Oh, I thought you were in danger. I am. The ravens are coming. Oh, the prison thing. Right, yeah, we see this guard owed me 53 ducats, so we made a deal. They're very reasonable people, actually, for weasels. Now, I got a brilliant plan to kidnap Zenobia. We capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows, and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and, oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky Ripper, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. They'd been close. She'd told him things no one else knew. But she'd never told him who she really was. She knows all the Emperor's plans, chuckled the master spy. She won't give them up easily. <laughs> She'll tell the interrogators, all right said Lapino. Taking her would change the game, all right. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Hero wall, hero sword, ice wall, ice cube.
I wonder what I could make with all these sword crafting materials, thought Renardo. Tell if someone's far away, or just really small. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong, thought Renardo. Oh, go ahead. I'm sure you know better, said Lapino. A crafting bench. Renato wondered what he could make with it. Missed his old skills. He welcomed them back like he was at a reunion.
Renato slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up on her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She became smoke. And he noticed he had a blade to his throat. Stay a while. Heard a familiar voice. Did you really think you could capture me? Zenobia said as her ship lifted off. Now I just wanted some privacy, Renato said. Did you ever wonder why the Emperor adopted you? And he told her why. His Imperial Majesty wanted to bring the lost gods back. They could make him immortal. But to seal the bargain, he needed a sacrifice. Someone who truly loved him. You're lying. She was furious. You can't prove that. I can. And so they set sail for the Nexus. The scientists at the observatory have resurrected one of his victims. Well, he's not exactly alive, but it can talk and it can't lie. You took a big risk. You know, I could just cast a spell to make you tell me where the rebel base is. And well, you wouldn't consider that cheating? She frowned. Ugh, oh, fine. Let's go get your witness. The rebellion had started after atrocities that the Empire hushed up. Renato had rescued a priest whose order had been massacred for one book. He had slept in a burnt village. Dead kittens and puppies had come to tell him what the Emperor had done to them. needed bridges anyway. Renato had been to a dungeon once where all the chests had teeth and eyes. It had been a short visit. She caught up with him. She seemed troubled. All right, out with it, he said. He sent his ravens to search for an ancient crystal, something called the Iblis Stone. Iblis? Isn't he one of the lost gods? He shivered. A stone dedicated to one of the lost gods. Well, oh, that could give great power. But what would the god demand in return?
The scientists on this island had been investigating the Emperor's dark rituals on their own. They were neutral in the civil war engulfing the Empire, but they could see that the dark magics the old toad had loosed were changing the world. Bernardo hoped he and Zenobia weren't putting them in danger. A sword, a crafting bench, and loads of materials. Hmm. where they stayed back and lobbed pain and death from a distance. Cowards. Really dangerous, effective cowards. This chest smelled kind of funky. Uh, he hoped he didn't get it in his clothes. found a Superman issue number one in mint condition in a jar he'd broken. He planned to keep breaking things until he had the whole series. The observatory was a burning hulk. Dead scientists and black feathers everywhere. The ravens had taken care to burn the reanimated witness to cinders. Zenobia stared around, shocked. The scientists had been neutral. They had no part in the rebellion. Take me to your council, she said, shaken. I have things to tell them. It was what Renato had gambled on. The Zenobia would turn against her father once she knew his madness. But the rebel base was secret. Could he really risk taking the Emperor's daughter there?
Bernardo reached Lapino by far speaker toad. No, we should take her to the base, insisted Lapino. No, I don't trust her. Nobody changes sides that fast, said Renardo. I better go to the base. Let them know you've got her, Lapino said. Just meet me at the far side of the mountains. There's a shuttle here I can take. Always has to be your way, doesn't it? Said Lapino. Zenobia was still shaking as they got out. I didn't know, she said. The ravens kept it secret. At first they sacrificed prisoners, then villages near the frontier, and then an orphanage. Kittens and puppies. Sometimes he'd come back to the palace and it was like there were glowing things behind his eyes. But I was so busy. I'll clear a path for us, Renato told Zenobia, so the ravens don't see you. Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poles. All the ingredients for a pretty nifty sword. Only he had some way to break the ice, or convince it he was a friend. What did you do if one of these platforms stalled?
Zenobia came up as he massaged his sore arm. Her eyes were wet. He's been saying strange things. He asked me to do... Uh, experiments. And some were wrong. They are banished, right? Said Renardo. Gone forever. I mean, he couldn't actually bring the old gods back, could he? She didn't answer him. That frightened him more than anything. Renato's paws were getting numb. Calaveras really didn't want company, did he? Most people still use doorknobs. Renato wondered if he should have taken Zenobia to the rebel base for real. Maybe she wasn't playing him after all. After the bleak talk about the Emperor's dark secrets, he was regretting his suspicions. Practice your moves, thought Renardo. Keeps you limber. They came up on an empty shack. He gestured her in. Where's the base? She asked, confused. I thought we could talk a bit first. Oh, you think I'm playing you? She was furious. I'm betraying my father, my father who picked me out of an alley, and you think I'm playing you? She lashed out. Her claws sliced fire into his face. Energy boiled in her other paw. But before she could kill him, he slashed his sword into her heart. 
She staggered. I could have loved you. You son of a bitch. And then she died. Renato stood there for hours, unable to move. Finally, a ship landed near him. Lapino had brought the Farfarer. On board the Farfarer, Lapino couldn't stop grinning. I can't believe you actually killed her. Why didn't I trust her? Renato said. All he could feel was emptiness. You killed the Emperor's daughter. You might want to run for it, if you care whether you live or die, that is. Since Renato didn't, he grabbed the wheel, and he sailed for the Imperial fleet. Bernardo had never felt worse. Zenobia had listened to him. He had trusted him. She had opened her eyes to her father's evil. Done everything he had hoped for. He had taken her to a dirty shack. Was he so used to lying that he couldn't trust even the girl he had always loved? He wasn't that good, yet. Personal space. Renata felt a little better. Railing on this thing, he thought. What was really fun was hooking yourself onto a moving ship.
hurt. He could see the rebels reeling back as he plunged into the ranks of the Ravens. He'd had to kill the girl he loved, but he'd also blown the biggest opportunity they could have had to turn the Emperor's daughter against him. Oh, Renata could only laugh miserably. He was taking crazy chances now, swinging wildly. He expected the Ravens to take him at any moment, but they were running in fear. No one wants to fight a man who doesn't care if he lives. No one wants to fight a hero. Soon, he'd confront the Emperor. Funny that this whole war had come about because the Emperor feared death. And now it was coming for him. There was some sort of lesson there, wasn't there? He was exhausted, could barely think. He wanted to stop thinking, 
The rebels were already finished, and he was the last. The Ravens were coming for him personally now, in waves. It didn't matter. He was slick with his own blood, but it didn't matter. In the distance, he could see her, embraced by a halo of light, holding her hand out to him. Had she forgiven him? Would she take him to the halls of the Valiant? Then he felt steel in his belly, and his chest, and his back. And he lay down, and he couldn't see her anymore. Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he'd just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He'd learned something. Zenobia still had feelings for him. He'd made bad choices. But now, when the real battle came, he wouldn't make those choices. He wouldn't make the same mistake twice. The book's pages began to flip backwards, towards the beginning. And he realized that his adventure was just beginning. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does thought Renardo. On the other hand, his old friend Lepino needed rescuing. Lepino was no game-changer, but could Renardo really leave an old friend to the Ravens? <laughs>